Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on solving absolute value equations. Now let's get started. When solving an absolute value equation, there are several steps you need to follow. First, you need to isolate the absolute value expression. What that means is if there are any other numbers either added or multiplied to your absolute value, you need to move those to the other side of the equation. Next, you need to rewrite the absolute value as a disjunction. Now, what is a disjunction? Well, it is a compound statement that uses the word or. Now, this term disjunction will be a little easier to explain when we do an example. So let's move on to the next step, which is to solve each part of the disjunction for the variable. And as always, don't forget to check your work. It is when you check your answers that you will discover if both of your answers are correct or if one or more of your answers does not actually work in the equation. Those types of answers are called extraneous. Now let's do some examples. Our first example is the absolute value of 3x plus 5 equals 14. Our first step is to isolate the absolute value expression. That means I need to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. And so if I do that, I'm going to end up with the absolute value of 3x, and that's going to be equal to 9. Next, I need to write, rewrite the absolute value as a disjunction. Now let me show you what that means. You take the terms that are inside the absolute value sign and you bring them out. So I'm going to say 3x equals, and it's going to equal the negative version of the answer. So it's going to equal negative 9. Or that same 3x could equal positive 9. The reason we do this has to do with the fact that an absolute value of a number just represents its distance from zero. So remember, if we use the example of how far is negative three from zero, it's three units, just like three from zero is three units. So it's because of this that we have got to break this absolute value equation apart and we have to solve two different ways. So now let's continue. On the first equation, I will divide each side by three and I will get x equals negative 3. On the right equation, I will also divide each side by 3, and I get x equals positive 3. Now remember, we're saying either one of these could be the answer. Now the only way we will find out is to check our work. So I'm going to take negative 3, and I'm going to substitute it for the x and see if it's true. So I will have the absolute value of 3 times negative 3 plus 5, and it should equal 14. Well, the absolute value of 3 times negative 3 would be the absolute value of negative 9. And the absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9. So I have 9 plus 5 equals 14. Okay, so that first one is true. That is one of our solutions. Now let's use the positive 3, and we will substitute it for x and see if that equation is still true. So I have the absolute value of 3 times positive 3 plus 5, and it should equal 14. Well, the absolute value of 3 times 3 is the absolute value of 9, which is 9. So I have 9 plus 5 equals 14. So that one is also true, so I have two solutions to example one. Now let's look at the second example. In order to isolate the absolute value expression, I need to divide each side by two. Those twos will cancel out. So I have the absolute value of x plus 9 equals 13. Now I can rewrite the absolute value equation as a disjunction. So I'm going to take the x plus 9 
and set it equal to negative 13. Or I can take the x plus 9 and set it equal to 13, positive 13. Now let's solve each equation. On the left equation, I would subtract 9 from each side so that x is equal to negative 22. And on the other equation, I would also subtract 9 from each side, and I would have x is equal to 4. So I'm saying my answer could be negative 22 or positive 4. So now let's check and see if it's true. I'm going to substitute negative 22 for the x inside the absolute value bars. So I'm going to have 2. Well, what is negative 22 plus 9? That's thir excuse me, negative 13. So I have 2 times the absolute value of 13, and it should equal 26. Well, the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13. So I have 2 times positive 13, which is 26, and yes, 26 equals 26. So that means this is a good solution. Now let's try the 4. So I've got 2 times the absolute value. Well, what is 4 plus 9? Positive 13. So I have 2 times absolute value of 13 equals 26. And we know the absolute value of 13 is 13. So 2 times 13 is 26. So this one also checks out. So again, I have two good solutions here. Now let's try a couple more examples. Okay, on number three, we have the absolute value of x minus 7 plus 8 equals 5. So in order to isolate the absolute value expression, I need to subtract 8 from both sides. And when I do that, I will have the absolute value of x minus 7 is equal to negative 3. Now remember, an absolute value can never equal a negative number because the absolute value of any number is always a positive number. So if you ever end up in a situation like this where your absolute value expression is equal to a negative number, that means you will have no solution. And that will always be the answer to this type of problem. Now let's look at our fourth example. It's just a little different. We actually have an expression on the right side of the equation. So it is the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 3x plus 1. Since the absolute value expression is already isolated, I just move right into writing or rewriting the absolute value as a disjunction. So that will look like this. I will have x minus 2 equals negative of 3x plus 1. See, I'm taking the negative, not just of the number, but of the expression. Or I will have x minus 2 equals 3x plus 1. Now let's go back to the first equation. We have x minus 2 equals, okay, so now let's distribute. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and uh, so I have negative 3x, and then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Now I'm going to add 3x to both sides. That will give me 4x on the left side. And then I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So that means x will be equal to 1 fourth. Now let's look at the bottom equation. I have x minus 2 equals 3x plus 1, so I will subtract 3x from both sides. 1x minus 3x is negative 2x, and then I need to add the 2 to both sides of the equation. So that means on the right side of the equation I will have 1 plus 2, which is 3. So that means x could equal negative 3 halves, because I had to divide both sides by negative 2. Now, I'm not quite done. I need to check both solutions. Now, when you plug, let's go back to the first one here. 
When you take one fourth and you substitute it for each of these x's, it does the equations both sides do equal. So that means yes, this one's a solution. So I'll put a box around it. Now, when you take negative 3 halves and you substitute it in, and you could use your calculator, but for the sake of time, I'm just telling you this. But when you substitute negative 3 halves in for each x, it does not make the equation true. In fact, the, the two sides do not equal each other. And so that means that negative 3 halves cannot be a solution. We call those extraneous solutions. It's a solution that you get, but it doesn't really work, so it's not really a solution. So that means this one actually only has one solution. Now, also, I hope this points out that this is why it's important to check your work, check your solutions, to, so you'll know if you have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Now, I hope this lesson video has helped you to understand a little bit about solving absolute value equations, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.